This is my family's old late 2013 iMac. We got it in early 2014, and for a couple years it was the computer I used constantly until I got a custom-built PC for myself. But this iMac really was important to me when I was younger, and even when I switched over from it, my brother continued to use it all the way until a few months ago when he got my old PC and I built a new one. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're going to be upgrading a six-year-old iMac. Now here's the thing about iMacs from 2011-ish and on. They typically have an i5 chip in them. It might be an old i5 chip, but they still do typically have decent performance, and if you have 8 gigs of RAM to go with it, the computer will probably perform better than you would expect, with one qualifier. Any old computer, including older iMacs, needs to have an SSD. This is essential nowadays, and if you're still using a classic old mechanical hard drive, a simple SSD upgrade could completely just change your entire computing experience to the point of being like 10 times faster. That might seem like an exaggeration, but it isn't. Occasionally online you see people saying that SSDs are overrated. Those people don't use SSDs, let me put it that way. And an SSD is really cheap now. You can get a 250 gig for under 50 bucks, and you can get a 500 for under 100 bucks. These are really good prices and are absolutely worth it to make your life way easier when it comes to your computer. This old iMac is, well, it's old. Not super old, mind you, but six years is probably a bit longer than the average lifespan of a computer, and generally speaking that would be the case for this one. This iMac, and probably most from its era, feels slow and bogged down, despite me restoring multiple times over its life, and the reason is is because of that ultra slow hard drive in there. If you have an older iMac or MacBook or PC, or really anything, an SSD is an upgrade you absolutely need to do. The iMac I have is a great example of this, because the specs are pretty legit. Quad core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, but but it's really slow thanks to that old one terabyte hard drive. And what's cool about this iMac is how modern it still looks. iMacs haven't gotten a redesign in a while, unless you include the iMac Pro, which really doesn't look a whole lot different. The screens have gotten better, but we still have the same ultra slim all-in-one body that originally came around 2012. Now this iMac has seen better days, and it is pretty dirty right now, so we will clean it up later, but first I'm pretty excited to open this thing up, so let's just get into it. First things first, this isn't a tutorial per se. If you follow my steps, you shouldn't have any troubles, but there are much more in-depth professional tutorials out there, so you should go look for one of those. Also, if you are going to open up your iMac, a couple things. First, things can go wrong. You might end up breaking the whole computer in one way or another, and so don't blame me if you do. Second, obviously make sure the computer is unplugged if you're going to open it up, and if you want to play it safe, leave it unplugged for I'd say about 48 hours or so to make sure the power supply is drained, because if you touch it and it still has charge, it can and will shock you pretty dark darn bad. This is mostly an easy and safe procedure, but I feel like it's probably good to get those disclaimers out there. But let's get this party started. To open the iMac, I grabbed some guitar pick type plastic things that come with the iFixit toolkit, and started separating the glass and LCD from the computer. It's really not too hard. Once you get in between, I found that it's easy to keep a pick in there, and take another one and start tearing the screen from the adhesive. You have to go around everywhere, and it can take a while, but once you've done the top and the sides, it'll start to come apart. Once this happens, you can can actually fold the screen down a little bit from the top and see inside the computer. Now this is where things get a little bit more fun. So there are two display cables we need to disconnect before we can take this screen off. One is pretty easy, you just pull it out, and the other you just kind of pull up this flap here and then pull out the cable. Once these are off, we can safely take off the screen, and to do this, we still have to deal with the adhesive at the bottom. So I kind of fold and then unfold the screen, and bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, bring it down, and this looses the adhesive at the bottom. Eventually, I bring it all the way down, and I take a pick, and I start to tear the adhesive sticking the screen to the body. After a little bit of work, the screen starts to tear off, and voila, just like that, we are into the iMac without the screen. This thing actually looks pretty cool from the inside. Side, as I would say most Apple products do. It definitely is dusty after like six years of neglect, so first things first, I took it to my garage and blasted it with some compressed air. After going ham for a bit it looked a whole lot better, so I brought it back in and now it was time to get the actual upgrade done. I would say this is the easy part. First things first, we can take out the mechanical hard drive, and you can see it right there. All we have to do is unscrew these four screws, and remember where they are going to go when we put everything back together, that's pretty important. They're all different sizes, so a couple of them are 
are different sizes. So definitely remember where they came from. Anyways, uh, all you have to do is unscrew them and kind of take off the bracket. And once you've done that on both sides, you'll have the exposed hard drive. Now all we have to do is gently pull it from the SATA connector and bam, we have the old hard drive. There it is. It looks like a old small mechanical hard drive, something you would pull from a laptop. We're going to be replacing it with this. This is a 500 gigabyte Samsung 860 Evo SSD, and it should make this computer feel like new. Actually, probably better than new. So let's get this thing in there. Now, the first thing is you need to plug this hard drive back into the SATA connector. That can be a little bit annoying to do. So what I did is I loosened this side plastic piece a little bit, and that gave me some wiggle room to kind of slip the SSD on. Once once I did that, it was the simple process of putting the brackets back on and screwing it in. Again, make sure you know where those screws are going. Once you do that, well, we already have the finished upgrade. There it is. That's the iMac with a Samsung SSD. This thing is going to be fast. Again, you gotta admit, you might not like Apple. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But man, they make beautiful, beautiful machines. And it's pretty crazy what they're able to fit into this small, tiny computer, considering that it's basically like a monitor size. This is a 21.5 inch iMac, by the way, if you were curious. I don't know if the process is different for a 27 inch if it is I'd imagine it's not by a lot but regardless at this point we're about ready to put the screen back on and see if this thing still works so first things first I finally tore off the old adhesive so we now had no glue or tape around the computer okay so we're at the point where we need to apply the new adhesive now I got my adhesive from iFixit and followed their tutorial for this it's pretty straightforward they number the uh, the tape for you to see which side you should put it on and whatnot. Now, I've heard of people using just double-sided tape and stuff like that, but that seems like a terrible idea to me. You don't want your screen falling off. That would be really bad. So strong adhesive is always good. I'd recommend you get the best you can find. So I started to follow the tutorial from iFixit. It was a pretty simple process. At this point, all the adhesive was on, and so life is good. So now we get to put the screen on. Isn't that fun? So uh, the easy way to do this is basically start by doing it on the bottom. So peel off the cover for the bottom adhesive and then stick the bottom of the screen to the bottom of the base just like it used to be. So that's what I did and before we peel off the covers for the rest of the adhesive and stick the screen on we want to make sure we connect the display. So it's the same thing that we did earlier but in reverse we stick in the cable ribbon and pull the flap down and then we just uh, connect the other connector. It's pretty simple. Once that's done we can fold up the screen and uh, peel away the covers for the adhesive and stick everything together. I went around the IMAX screen and I pressed to make sure that everything was stuck and then I was good. So now we have the iMac upgrade done. It's just a matter of uh, booting into recovery mode and formatting the hard drive. At this point I realized I done goofed. Do you know what I did? Uh, so I plugged in the iMac and I turned it on and uh, nothing showed up on the screen. It was just black. Uh oh. So I started panicking. I, I would have to cut the adhesive away and open it up again and see what was wrong, figure it out, and then buy more adhesive and do all that. This was, oh, wait a sec. Something showed up on the screen. So what happened is it just took a little while to uh, boot into the, basically, there's no hard drive that's set up here screen. So thank goodness it works. Uh, I got really lucky. Normally you should uh, connect the display ribbon and cable and then kind of tape the screen on or something so it holds and test it and make sure the new hard drive works before, you know, you uh, put the whole thing together. That was dumb of me, but I got lucky and so it's time to go into recovery mode. Now this is pretty simple, all you have to do is hold Command Option R, or in my case on a Windows keyboard it was just the Windows button, Alt R, and this will boot you into what's called Internet Recovery Mode. So essentially these newer Macs that have Wi-Fi in them, or I'd imagine if they had Ethernet plugged in, but all Macs have Wi-Fi in them now, you can actually uh, reset your hard drive and download the newest update over the internet without having to have a boot disk in there or anything. That's really cool. And I I wish Windows did that. I, I mean, maybe they do on some computers, but none that I've ever used. Anyway, so we booted into that, and that, that took quite a, quite a while. Took a good 10 minutes or so, at least, to get into there. And then once we did, uh, it was a simple process of first formatting the new hard drive, 500 gig SSD, formatted to just the uh, basic Mac OS format, and uh, then uh, it was able to recognize the new hard drive, and we were able to install Mac OS Catalina. This was really, really simple, and way easier than I expected 
things to be. Honestly, I kept expecting things to go wrong, but everything just worked. I continued through the setup, I uh, started downloading it or getting it installed, and yeah, it took about half an hour, but after that, uh, it booted me right into Catalina without any problems whatsoever. I'm not used to computers just working. If you've watched my uh, Windows XP Vista videos, I've had a lot of problems that I probably shouldn't have had, and, uh, well, this time I didn't, so that was really refreshing. I did this upgrade to an old MacBook of mine, a MacBook Pro from 2012, and just an SSD upgrade a year or two ago, and it was honestly just as easy, in fact easier because you don't have to take the screen off and then, you know, use adhesive to put it back on. It's crazy how well Macs just work. I think that's something that's severely underrated in the uh, PC community particularly. Macs just work. Assuming you do the upgrade right, this is super easy to do, and I think anyone can do it. Now, I'm not saying that you should do it, because you do have a lot of risk of breaking your computer if you're dumb and do something wrong, but if you have an older Mac, um, especially not an iMac, one that's a little easier to take apart, like a 2012 MacBook Pro or older, an SSD is a really good idea. It'll breathe new life into your computer, and uh, it's not something you're gonna regret. And uh, so now, just messing around with the computer a bit, uh, it's working absolutely fine. I installed Minecraft, because because for whatever reason, that seems to be my go-to whenever I test a computer. And uh, that was running really well. It was giving me a solid 60 FPS for the most part, a couple drops here and there, but nothing too crazy. So that was nice to see. I just kind of ran around, uh, killed a cow, and then found a village. And then, uh, well, I killed a villager because I'm a horrible person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that works, so that's nice. Just basic internet browsing, of course, that works. In fact, it was really fast. Uh, everything loaded extremely quickly, and that's always nice to see. Going through folders, like applications, uh, moving around Finder, that kind of thing. The computer was just fast, way, way better than it ever has been before. It can perform pretty well. Of course, this computer is only six years old, but that's still pretty old in computer years. Most computers, I would say, don't last six years, and now I think this one is set up to probably go at least another five with that SSD. I really could see it doing that. You might be wondering what I'm going to do with the iMac uh, now that it's fast again, and honestly, I'm not sure yet. I have a couple ideas. I might use it for for, um, I'm hoping to move out here soon and uh, get kind of more of a better studio going, and so I, I think it could be useful there. Uh, this iMac is pretty legit. I bet it could even run Final Cut, considering I had a 2015 MacBook Air at one point that could run Final Cut, like, actually half decently, so this computer definitely could. All in all, this computer is uh, legit. It's one that uh, would work for almost anything, and this is what it should have been back in late 2013. It should have come with an SSD, but of course that technology wasn't super relevant at the time, or prevalent would probably be the better word there. Regardless, uh, that's about it for me. Uh, it's a bit of a rambly video maybe, um, it's not scripted, so that's what happens when I don't script my videos. Yeah, I, I just needed some content, so I did that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't do a lot of these more, um, I don't know if I'd call it an upgrade video, or more just kind of relaxed, uh, working on something type video a whole lot, but if you like it, I mean, uh, let me know. I always appreciate feedback. I enjoy doing them, and I needed some content for this weekend, quite frankly, so this seemed like a good choice because I'd been meaning to put an SSD in that computer for quite a while now. Anyways, uh, to conclude things here, uh, definitely put an SSD if you have an old computer. If you're worried about getting something upgraded, uh, that's completely understandable. You could try to get a quote from, uh, you know, your local computer store to see how much they would charge you for it. It's not a super difficult process, but if you're not really um, tech minded, I would say, or you haven't worked with any kind of repairs at all, it's one that I wouldn't attempt because if you break it, it's a pretty expensive loss. These older iMacs still go for tons of money on Craigslist, and you could always sell it and uh, put that money towards a new iMac and uh, one that has an SSD. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm pretty much done here, so thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting or even helpful, if you're just scrolling through trying to find out how to fix one of these old iMacs up with an SSD, maybe hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content just like this. Have you ever upgraded your old Mac in any way, whether it be an SSD or even RAM back when you could still do that? Let me know in the comments down below. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you want to keep up when I'm doing random stuff like this. And you can also uh, join the community Discord if you want. I haven't been on as much lately because I've been kind of busy in my personal life, but um, yeah, it's always fun over there and we have like uh, 800 members or something crazy. So yeah, come drop by in 91 Tech Discord link in the description. And uh, with that all being said, thanks again for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.